Gracias. How are you? Good are you? Good evening, Graciela. Very well. What about your baby? It's sleeping right now. It's sleeping. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, I just slept him because in that way I can be more relaxed because I know that he is with his dad. Well, both of them, sorry, both of them are resting. So that's okay. Ah, okay. How old is he? Uh, he's 11 months. Oh, it's, it's really little. It's a baby. <laughs> How yeah. is his name? Uh, his name is Ernesto Jared. Uh, I like Jared. It's from the Bible. Yes. Uh, my husband, well, he was the one that decided to, to call him like that. It's the first of, of him. It's your first baby. Yes. I could. I had to. I don't have baby. I couldn't have baby. But I have nieces and nephews. Uh, uh, my uh, uh, here in the house there are two girls. The first, her name is Paula, and the second is Sochil. But Sochil is terrific. <laughs> terrible, terrible. And how old is she? She has three, three years old. Oh. And Paula is seven years old. But uh, the little girl is terrific. Uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, even uh, though my baby She likes to cry. <laughs> a lot. Oh my god. Oh. Yes, even though my baby is just 11 months, um, he is kind of, my god, uh, he loves running, going to every place here in the house. He's learning to walk and he always gives me his hand and, and tries to, to everything. Run. Yeah. And there's a little kitten too. And when he sees the kitten, he wants to pick him up. And there are many things that we have to be really careful with. Okay. It's a lot of job. Yes. For you. A lot. Believe me. And he only wants to be with me. Mind. So it's like, there's nothing else I can do. But just to take care of him and love him. It's more difficult. Yes. It's more difficult when, uh, when you are alone with him. Here in the house, my sister, uh, my sister has to take care of them, the two girls. But some, sometimes he doesn't want to go out. <laughs> he would like to go out. <laughs> Uh, I, I can imagine her. Yeah, I can imagine her. Believe me that sometimes it's really difficult, especially when you know that there are things that you need to do or that you have to do, and they don't let you. But thanks God my husband is with me, and he helps me a lot with the baby. And also with the chores at home because he's the one that does the laundry, he cleans the house, and it's a good husband. <laughs> yes, yeah. believe me that he is. I'm very lucky and blessed to find someone like him. It's a blessing of God, really. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Nice. Yes. Hi, Sarita. How are you? Hi, five. Thank you, teacher. I'm good. Thanks for asking. And how was your day? Um, I have day. Ay, raro, porque no sé, no, no, no me he sentido bien. Pero gracias a Dios he logrado terminar y estoy aquí. Okay, excellent. Ya dispuesta a seguir aprendiendo. Perfect. Y yo como les dije ayer. No sé si logran ver. Tengo mis, tar mis tarjetitas. So we are going to be playing. 
You can see this one. I have another one. Go. Yes. Because we Go. are going to be practicing irregular verbs today. So you see? Yes. Sí. yes. Excellent. And if you can see, I don't have all of them. It's just a few. No las tengo todas, solamente una parte porque son todas estas. De los verbos irregulares que tengo. So you can see them. Please, uh -huh. yes, there are many. I want to memorize. I was writing and writing, but uh, there are a lot. Yes, and okay. I think that we are going to be practicing a lot with irregular verbs because that is something that you really need to learn and to memorize, especially when you are talking in simple past tense. Okay. And uh, good evening for the ones that are just joining us. Uh, we are going to start, we are going to begin. If you remember, yesterday we studied the simple past tense for regular verbs. We studied the pronunciation, um, affirmative sentences, negative sentences, and also yes, one question. There was something that we didn't study, that we didn't study, sorry, and it was how to make open questions or information questions. So that's something that we are going to be studying today as well. But we are going to begin, first of all, with irregular verbs, okay? There is a video that we have on the platform that we are going to be watching right now, how to make affirmative sentences and negative sentences. And since we already know how to make um, yes, no questions, we will work on that as well, okay? So let's begin watching that video. And then we will move to the irregular verbs. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Hi everyone. In this class you learn to form positive and negative statements using irregular verbs. Let's get started by listening and practicing these statements in the past using irregular verbs. Simple past statements, irregular verbs. I did my homework. I didn't do laundry. You got up at noon. You didn't get up at 10 o'clock. He went to the museum. He didn't go to the library. We met our classmates. We didn't meet our teacher. You came home late. You didn't come home early. They had a picnic. They didn't have a party. In English, we have two types of verbs. In our last class, we learned how to use regular verbs and learned the simple rule of adding ed to change those verbs to the past tense. We also have irregular verbs, which are more complicated because there really isn't a particular rule to follow. You will need to learn them and memorize them. To form positive statements in the past using irregular verbs, we will follow the same formula as with forming positive statements with regular verbs. Subject plus verb in the past tense plus complement. On these charts, you can see a few examples. If you notice, the positive statements have the verbs in the past tense. And the negative statements have the verbs in the present tense. For example, the past of the verb do is did, get up, the past is got up, go, the past is went, meet, the past is met, come, the past is came, have, the past is had. 
let's analyze the first example. I did my homework. First, we add the subject I. Then we include the verb in the past tense, did. Finally, we add a complement, homework. To form negative statements, we will follow this formula. Subject plus didn't, the auxiliary didn't, plus verb in the present, plus complement. I didn't do laundry. First, we add the subject I. Then, we add the auxiliary verb to form negative statements in the past. Didn't. After that, we add the verb in the present. Do. Finally, we add the complement. Laundry. Now, it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to make positive and negative statements using these irregular verbs. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay. At the subject I. So you could see that there we have affirmative uh, and negative sentences using irregular verbs. Uh, for example, we have the first one that says, I did my homework. Then we have, you got up at noon. He went to the museum. We met our classmates, you came home late, and they had a picnic. Uh, something that I was mentioning to you, and that the video mentions as well, is that the only way we have to learn irregular verbs is memorizing them, okay? La única manera que nosotros tenemos para aprendernos los verbos irregulares es memorizarlos. No hay una fórmula como la que estuvimos viendo en días anteriores, ¿verdad? Que solamente le agregamos D o ED, sino que aquí tenemos que aprender cómo vamos a ir escribiendo esos verbos en pasado. ¿Ok? Uh, is there any question that you may have about this video? No, teacher. No. Ok. Okay, and what about the others? Was everything clear? Just teacher. Okay, thank you. So let's see. Uh, how many of you were able to see or to study the list of irregular verbs that I sent to you? I was studying, but uh, I was uh, looking for the meaning. Ah, okay. Because no, some of them, I, I don't know what the meaning. What they are, okay. And I couldn't. Okay, I see. Just trying to see if I can open another material that I have. And this is something that I have created, that I have a list of regular and irregular verbs. And for that one, I already have, I have them with the meaning. So let me see if I can share them with you as well. So while I'm waiting for that, I was explaining at the beginning that I have these little little cards for you. Okay, so I have here some irregular verbs, probably the ones that we are going to be using the most. And the things that we are going to do right now, or what I need you to do right now is the following. Okay, um, I'm going to be showing them and I need you to tell me if you know what the meaning of those verbs are. Or if you know what the past tense is. Just give me. Okay. So here it is.
Okay, so let me share this with you. This is what I was explaining to you. So I have these lists that I have worked on that you can see that we have. Uh, it's the same that I sent to you, but in this one, I just have it with the minutes, right? So you can see that we have the days form, we have the simple past, and also we have the past participle form plus the meaning. Okay, so in this one, it is easier because you already have the meaning for those verbs. Uh, something that really calls my attention is with the second verb that we have. Uh, why? Because most of the time we think that we're talking about the, the animal. Casi siempre que yo le enseño esta lista a mis estudiantes, ¿verdad? Con este verbo, el segundo, me dicen, teacher, pero ¿y eso qué no significa oso? Girl. Y yo, o sea, sí y no, ¿verdad? Recuerden que nosotros en el inglés hay palabras que cumplen dos funciones. Por ejemplo, ese verbo, girl, que puede ser, bueno, puede funcionar como un sustantivo o como un verbo. Como un sustantivo, ya sabemos qué significa. Oso. Ok. Y como verbo. Soportar. Eh. Ok. Resistir. Yes. Ok, excellent. We also have another one that is book. What is the meaning of book? As a noun. Libro. Okay, and as Libro. a verb. Y como verbo, ¿alguna idea? I don't know, teacher. So, for example, I can book a room in a hotel. ¿Cómo buscar? If I go to a Una hotel. Teacher. Okay, excellent. That's the meaning, okay? Reserva. So I can book a room in a hotel or I can also book a flight, for example. Okay? So you can see that there are some words that have two functions or can have more functions. So this is one of them, okay? Esta es una de ellas, ¿verdad? No solamente nos funciona como sustantivo, sino que también como verbo. Okay? Teacher. Yes? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, with the bear, with the bear, like, like, it's it's similar, like it's similar because I I can say I like music, or you look like your father. Okay. In, yes. In the second case, mm -hmm. you look like you like your father. Like is como. Sorry, you're on mute, Graciela. Okay, sorry. In the in the case of the verb like, I can say I like music. Yes. But I can say you look like your father. In yes. this case, like it uh, it could be a verb, but it could be a a word. Yes. And it also. means como. Correct. Ok, sí, en ese caso también tiene dos funciones. Ok, and in the second example you said look like, look is the verb. And then look like te pareces a tu papá, for example. Or you look like your mother, te pareces a tu mamá. Ok, in that case, yes, it can have two functions as well. Ok. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so I have this list as I was explaining to you, and I have another one that I didn't share with you, and this is with regular verbs. So you can see here that we have the base form, then we have the simple past, the participle form, and we also have the, the meaning. Okay, and the one that we are going to be focusing right now is this, okay, with irregular. And if we wanted to share this information with you, I can do it later or probably tomorrow.
because we already have the meaning for those verbs, okay? So you can see them. Okay. Vaya, les comentaba, si gustan después les puedo compartir lo que es lo que es este esa lista, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes lo tengan. Ok. Yes. Okay, teacher. Yes. Okay. You're Thank welcome. you, teacher. You're welcome. So we are going to begin. Vamos a ver qué tanto recuerdan o si se pueden alguno de los verbos que tengo acá. Okay. I'm going to begin with the first one, the easiest. This is the easiest one, but you will always find. Verb to be. Okay, and what is the simple past for the verb be? Simple. Was. was or were. Okay, excellent. Was or were. And the were. past participle? Been. Been. Okay, been. been. Excellent. Let's see the next one. So, for you to see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But you cannot see that I'm cheating on you. So I have it. The chosen one. Make. make. Okay. Made. Make. That's it. Okay. The past made. Okay. Made. And the past participle? Past participle. Made. 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 Okay. Made. Excellent. Easy, right? Yeah, those are easy. Let's see the next one. Drink, drink, drunk, bebed. Uh -huh, okay, drink, drunk, drunk, and drunk. Okay. Drink, drunk, drunk. Okay, excellent. Let's see the next one. Lose, lose, lost. Um, I think that it's similar. Yes. Lose, lost, lost. And what does it mean? Perder. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going with the next one. Try. I never forget try. <laughs> yes, this is something that right. we said yesterday. Yes, Rope. Drove and the past Drove. participle? Driving. Driving. Driven. Driven. Yes. Drive, Drive. drove, driven. Drive. Okay. Let's see another one. Okay. No. Blow. 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 Okay. Blow. Excellent. Blow. And blow. Blue. Blow. Blue. Blue, 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 okay. Blue. Yeah, the past, the simple past of this verb is like the color. The pronunciation is like the color, blue. Blow, blue, 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 okay. como el color, solamente que se escribe diferente. Okay, let's see another one. Ah, pues creo que voy a usar todos los verbos, ya que se los pueden. Ay, ¿qué significaba? Soplar. Ah, excellent. <laughs> okay, then we have this one. Bring. Okay, bring, broke, broad. And what does it mean? Okay, excellent. Vaya, para los que pensaban que solo eran estos verbos. Let me show you. <laughs> pues ahorita estoy trabajando con estos, pero tengo estos otros, ¿verdad? Son todos los que están en la lista. Bueno, tengo unos más, pero... Ok. So, let's see the next one. Give. Give. Uh, Gave. Gave. Give. Give. Excellent. Give. Okay, and what does it mean? That. 
Dar. Dar. Excellent. Sí. 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 So. Okay. So. So. Sin. 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 And what does it mean? Sin. Sin. Per. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Let's see the next one. Sin. Sí. Go. 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 Ir. Go. Excellent. Oh. I really like that. Okay, let's see the next one. Buy. Buy. Comprar. Okay. Boat. Pay. Boat. And boat. And boat. Okay. Buy, boat, boat. Okay, let's see another one. I'm, I'm going to show you an easy one, okay? Good, 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 and good. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what does it mean? Cortar. Cortar. Okay, perfect. Good. Easy, right? <laughs> Bad. Break. 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 Broke. Break. Broke. Broke. Okay. Broke. And broken. Broke. Okay, excellent. Break, oh. broke, broken. And what does it mean? No. Okay, excellent. Read. 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 Read, bread, bread, like the color as well. And what does it mean? Leer. Leer. Okay. Perfect. Do, do, did, do, did, 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 and don't. Okay. Do. And what is the meaning? Hacer. Perfect. Hacer. Did, don't. Excellent. And the last one, so I'm going to combine them. And these ones do. Let's see if you are lucky, the lucky ones. Vamos a ver si ustedes son afortunados. Tengo, tengo unas tarjetitas con carita, ¿verdad? Así que si le sale la carita es porque hasta ahí llego. Si no, voy a continuar. Ah, ok. Yeah. So here we go. Stand. Stop. 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 Okay. Stand. Stood. 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 Okay. And what does it mean? Okay. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Easy, right? I like the cost. I, <laughs> I love them. Yeah, cause, could, put, let. Um, let me remember another one. Pick. Yeah, there are many of them. Perfect. Any questions so far? No. Oh, it's so clear. Okay, excellent. Um, In my case. Okay. Vaya, entonces vamos a trabajar en lo siguiente. Okay. Since there are no questions for irregular verbs, and you said that everything is clear. Um, let's see. We are going to start working with affirmative sentences and negative sentences, okay? With affirmative sentences, can any one of you give me an example using an irregular verb? Uh, 
red letter. Mm -hmm. Yes. I begin me my class on time. I. I. Be in past or present? In past. No, in past. Ah, in past. Okay, in past. Then I began okay. my class on time. Excellent. Let's see another one. Um, Jaime. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, sorry, my bad. Uh, I cut the paper with the uh, uh, what is the meaning? Tijeras teacher? Scissors. Uh, okay, uh, I cut the paper with the scissors. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just checking the spelling for scissors. Okay, yes, it is scissors. Thank you. Um, okay, Josue Mauricio, tell me another example, please. Okay. She worked in the supermarket. Okay, uh, can you tell me another one using an irregular verb, please? On the supermarket. Okay, excellent. ¿Me puede decir ahora una okay. con un verbo irregular? Mm. <laughs> he he could the paper. Okay. Okay. I have a verb for you. Fine. 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 Yes. Okay, so let's change the verb because cut, we already have it. So we can say that he yeah. found the paper. paper. Okay, thank you. Let's see, um, Sarita. Yes, teacher. I am past. Yes, using irregular verbs. I eat. Um, at the diner, I eat a, a diner. I cold. I eat or ate. Diner. No, eat. Eight. Eight. Okay. So you ate. Dinner. Cold. Yes, I ate my dinner. Oops, sorry. Cold. Okay. Thank you. Let's see one more. And this is going to be for um, Beatrice. Mm. Podría ser I did my homework. Okay, I did my homework. Thank you. So you can see that there we have those examples of affirmative sentences in simple past. Now let's continue working with these examples, but in negative form. And for that one, uh, we're going to have, let me see, uh, Christopher, are you on the computer or on your cell phone? Hello, good evening, I am in my cell phone. In your cell phone, okay. Um, let's see, Kate, what about you? Are you on a computer or on your cell phone? Computer teacher. Okay, so I'm going to give you control of mine 
and you are going to write the first sentence in negative in its negative form, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I have given you control. Okay. Uh, no, no me. Ahí está. Ahí está, okay. No sigue escribiendo. No, no, no me deja, no escribe. Okay, so let's try it again. Okay, ahí está. Okay. Creo que tengo que ir letra por letra porque no. Ahí está. No me agarra el, el, el. Ahí está, ahí está, ahí está. Okay, I understand that sometimes it can be difficult for you controlling my sí. computer. Sí, este, porque tengo que presionar y no me la agarra, no sé si, porque escribo y, y no, me, no me lo agarra. Okay. <laughs> Vamos letra por letra. Okay, I think that with that is enough. Creo que con eso es suficiente. Sí, porque. Okay, teacher. Yeah, thank you. And sorry okay. about that. Pero espérame, ahorita estoy yo tratando aquí de. Okay, okay. De controlar. Okay, thank you. Oops, sorry. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so you can see that here we have the first one in negative. And as I was explaining to you, I understand that sometimes can be difficult for you controlling the, the computer or another person's computer, but I can see that everything is clear for you. For example, we have the auxiliary, well, the negative auxiliary here, but we were missing the T, right? I didn't begin my class on time, but it was excellent. So we have, I didn't, my class on time. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, the second sentence, how would that be? Krishna? Can you tell us the second sentence, but it, in its negative form, please? I didn't. Okay. 
book the paper with the scissors. Okay. Thank you. The next one. How would that be, Erika? I didn't go to the party. Okay. Yeah, we can say I didn't go to the park. Thank you, Erika. Um, let me see who's next. Karen. Yes, teacher. The next sentence. She, okay, she. Uh -huh. She didn't work on the supermarket. Thank you. Let's see the next one. Um, just give me a few seconds. Okay, Christopher. Okay, um, he didn't find the okay. paper. Thank you. Um, Sarita, the next one. I, I, I didn't, I didn't work tomorrow. Um, ahí tenemos un problema de tiempo. Me está diciendo que no trabajo mañana. Work, work it. Ajá. Uh -huh. Work it. Yeah, but tomorrow, o sea, mañana no hemos llegado aún. Fuera diferente que me dijera ayer, que es pasado. Ah. I didn't work yesterday, for example. Yesterday. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. Sí, porque si yo digo no trabajé uh -huh. mañana, mmm, Como que con el tiempo, ¿verdad? El mañana sí, está... Sí, sí, sí. No hay mucha concordancia. Ok. Thank you. Ok. So you can see that here we have affirmative sentences and negative sentences using irregular verbs. Something that we mentioned yesterday is that when we are using uh, the auxiliary didn't, the verb will go back to its base form. Algo que mencionábamos el día de ayer, que cuando estamos trabajando nosotros con lo que son verbos irregulares, e incluso regulares, siempre que usamos el auxiliar didn't, el verbo regresa a su forma normal. No sé si hasta acá está claro o si tienen alguna pregunta. No, I don't have question, teacher. Ok. Excellent. So is everything clear for you? Eh, los verbos siempre van a ir en presente, sean regulares o irregulares, teacher, en las negative sentences. That is correct. Okay. Sí, desde que yo veo lo que es el auxiliar didn't, sorry, desde que yo tengo lo que es el didn't, Yo ya sé que el verbo va a regresar a lo que es su forma normal. Lo mismo sucede en el presente simple, pero en tercera persona. Cuando estoy usando lo que es el das o el dasen. Ok, si ustedes recuerdan, cuando yo voy a hacer una oración negativa. She doesn't play soccer. Ok, ahí el verbo play regresa a su forma normal. No digo she doesn't plays. ¿Verdad? Porque eso gramaticalmente es incorrecto. Okay. Uh, okay. Any other question? No teacher. No, no teacher. No teacher. Okay, excellent. So let's continue, but with questions. Vamos a continuar entonces con preguntas. Um, can I erase the negative sentences? Puedo borrar las oraciones negativas. Yes. Okay. Thank you. 
So we will continue working with the examples we have here, but now we are going to make questions. How do we form questions in simple past? Yes, no questions. ¿Cómo hacemos las oraciones? Perdón, las preguntas en pasado simple. You can use this. Okay. You. Okay, did you. Begin your class on time. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you can see that we have the first example. What I'm doing is using, first of all, the auxiliary D. Then I have subject. I'm going to put it here. So you can see that we have the auxiliary. Then we have subject. Then we have the verb in its base form. Then we have... Complement. Okay, we have the complement. And at the end we have... ¿Qué tenemos al final? Signo de interrogación. Okay, the question mark, excellent. So that's the way that we are going to be working with questions. We are going to have first of all the auxiliary, that in this case is did, then we have the subject, the verb that goes back to its base form, plus a complement and the question mark, okay? So let's continue here. Okay, so we have the first sentence into its question form. So let's work with the second one. Now that we know how to form questions, how would the second one be? ¿Cómo no va a quedar la segunda? Did you cut okay. the paper cut? with the scissors? Okay. What about the third one? Did she work in the supermarket, on the supermarket? Okay. The next one? Did he, Did he found? Found or find? Find. Okay. Find. Yes, remember that the verb goes back to its base form. Okay, the next one. Did you eat your dinner they, cold? Did you eat your dinner cold? Okay, and the last one. Did you do did your homework? you do your homework? Excellent. So you can see that there we have Yes, no questions in simple past tense. Ok, y como mencionábamos anteriormente, ¿verdad? Desde que yo estoy usando lo que es el auxiliar did, el verbo siempre va a ir en su forma normal. Ok, algo más que estuvimos viendo el día de ayer fueron las respuestas cortas. So, we have the first question. Did you begin your class on time? Um, let me see, Mauricio. Jose Mauricio, did you begin your class on time? Yes, I did. Okay, excellent. Negative? No, I didn't. Excellent. Okay, Karen, did you cut the paper with the scissors? Yes, I did. And negative? No, I didn't. Thank you. Beatriz, did she work on the supermarket? Yes, I did. No, yes, she did. Yes, I did. I or she? I did. Why, why I? She. Why she? Oh. Um, so yeah, because it's a yeah. 
Yes, the question is, did she work on the supermarket? Uh, she did. Yes, she did. Or? Uh, yes, she did. Uh, no. Oh, she. Uh, no, she didn't. Okay, no. excellent. Thank you. Um, Christopher, did he find the paper? Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Okay, thank you. Let's see the next question. Um, Erica, did you eat your dinner cold? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Okay, thank you. And the last one, let me see. Um, Jaime, did you do your homework? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Okay, excellent. Uh, is there any question at this point? No. Is everything clear for you? Clear. Yes. Okay, excellent. So this is what we are going to do right now. Uh, we are going to be working eh, in... Solo una pregunta. Uh -huh. Yo sí tengo una en las preguntas, en las in, in, interrogativas. En, eh, vamos a usar el, 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 el verbo en presente o en su forma pasada. No, como tengo lo que es el auxiliar did, ese auxiliar me modifica el verbo. O sea que siempre va a ser el trabajo el auxiliar. Sí, eh, el auxiliar... ¿qué Vaya, permítanme. Vale, les voy a compartir otra vez la pizarra. Y voy a borrar eso. Ok, so for example. I work. No, I'm, I'm, I think that I'm going to change this. I work at the hospital, for example. Okay, you can see that I have there the same sentence three times. Vaya, tengo la misma oración tres veces. Aquí, si ustedes se dan cuenta, solo con verla yo puedo decir que estoy hablando en presente simple. Ahora bien, I don't work at the hospital. I didn't work at the hospital. Y también puedo decir, I won't work at the hospital. Si se dan cuenta, acá tengo lo que es el don't, el didn't y el won't. Pero la oración prácticamente sigue siendo la misma. Entonces, ¿qué viene a ser acá lo que es el don't, el didn't y el won't? Any idea? Los tiempos. Ajá, los tiempos. ¿Qué me indica acá el don't? Presente. No trabajo en el hospital. Ajá, okay. Presente. Presente, sí. Presente. Ok, y el didn't? Pasado. En pasado, pasado. sí. Ok, y el won't? Yo, yo. Ok, excellent. Vaya, si ustedes se dan cuenta, la estructura prácticamente es la misma. Lo único que estoy haciendo acá es usar diferentes auxiliares negativos, lo cual me dan a entender a mí el tiempo. Ok, en este caso, que yo uso el don't, yo me ubico que estoy usando lo que es 
presente simple, que estoy hablando en presente. Ahora bien, si yo tengo lo que es el didn't, yo entiendo que estoy hablando de algo en pasado. Y al ver el want, yo entiendo que es algo a futuro. Sin embargo, se dan cuenta que la oración viene siendo la misma. ¿Ok? Lo único que he cambiado acá es el auxiliar, el cual me indica en qué tiempo estoy hablando. Yo no trabajo en el hospital. Yo no trabajé en el hospital. Yo no trabajaré en el hospital. ¿Ok? Esa es prácticamente la función que tienen los auxiliares en inglés. Ahora bien. Y acá tengo y también cambio. Ok. Igual, tengo lo que es la oración I work at the hospital. Solo que ahora lo que he hecho es agregarle el auxiliar al inicio. Transformarla en pregunta. Do I work at the hospital? Did I work at the hospital? Will I work at the hospital? Si se dan cuenta es lo mismo. Lo único que acá, que con el auxiliar al inicio, yo doy a entender que es una pregunta. Ahora bien, ¿en qué tiempo está la primera pregunta? Present. In present. Ok, and the second one? Simple past. Simple past. In past, ok. And the last one? Future. Ok, Future. excellent. Future. Perfect. Vaya, si se dan cuenta, la oración siempre es la misma. Lo único que yo hago es agregarle el auxiliar al inicio para formar la pregunta y agregarle el signo de pregunta. Lo único que aquí me cambia es el tiempo. Es decir, presente, pasado y futuro. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. Very, very clear. Okay. Now. Yes. Thank you. Y lo otro, ¿verdad? Que preguntaban. El verbo. Si se dan cuenta, siempre se mantiene. Okay. Ahora bien, si fuera en tercera persona, we can say, sorry, she works as, at the hospital. Y como es en tercera persona, does she work at the hospital? Did she work at the hospital? And will she work at the hospital? Se dan cuenta que es lo mismo. ¿Ok? En la única que me va a cambiar el verbo va a ser en su forma presente. Porque estoy hablando en tercera persona. She works at the hospital. Acá el auxiliar, como ya hemos estudiado anteriormente, ¿verdad? Utilizo lo que es el das para tercera persona, pero el verbo siempre regresa a su forma normal. Acá tengo lo que es el did, pero el verbo en su forma normal. Tengo will e igualmente el verbo en su forma normal. ¿Ok? Vaya, hasta acá. Ok. Está todo claro. No los confundí más. No. No, teacher. Okay. It's clear. Ok, excellent. Perfect. Um, los iba a mandar a que trabajaran así en, en grupo, pero ya no tienen quedando unos cinco minutos. So, we're going to do it like this. Um, ok, el orden que tengo ahorita es primero Graciela, luego Jaime, Sarita, Mauricio, Christopher, Beatriz, Kate, Erika, Keren y Brian. What are we going to do? Vaya, pongan atención. Inicia Graciela con una oración afirmativa. It doesn't matter if it is regular or irregular, ¿ok? Jaime va a decir la misma oración, pero de forma negativa. Sarita va a decir la misma oración de forma interrogativa. Luego inicia Mauricio con una afirmativa y así sucesivamente. ¿Está claro? Okay. Only, una, yes, un, only a question. En past, 
in past, using regular or irregular verbs. Usando verbos regulares o irregulares. It doesn't matter. So let's begin, Graciela. I got up early. Okay. Yo lo voy a decir en interrogativo. Simple. Go, no le negativa. Simple. Negativa. Ah, negativa. Eh, eh, I didn't code. I no. didn't code. Eh, es la misma oración de Graciela. Ah, ajá, ella dijo. Eh, ¿Podría repetir Simple. Graciela, por favor? Sorry. I got up early yesterday. I got up. Ah, ok. I didn't get up early. Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday, sorry. Okay, thank you, Sarita. Did I get up yesterday? Early yesterday? Early yesterday. Excellent. Okay, Jose Mauricio, affirmative. I play. Soccer on Sunday. Okay, thank you. Christopher, negative. Uh, sorry, I uh, can hear me. I'm no sorry. Uh, Josue Mauricio said, I played soccer on Sunday. Okay, I didn't play soccer on Sunday. Thank you. Beatriz, in question. Hello, Beatriz. Hello. Okay. It's the same sentence, but in question. La misma oración que dijo Mauricio, pero en forma de pregunta. Okay. Say, uh, no sé. Uh, did you play soccer on Sunday? Okay. Thank you. And sorry, me hicieron falta cuatro, pero ya por el tiempo, no, no, no crea que se me salvan. Mañana iniciamos con ustedes, ¿verdad? Ok. <risa> yes. Ok. Vaya, por el día de ahora nos quedamos hasta acá, ¿verdad? Y nos vemos hasta mañana. Ok. Ok, teacher. So nice. that's all for me. Nice. Yeah, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.